let's review 30 extremely high yield anatomy facts that you have to know for the USMLE Step 1 and the USMLE Step 2 CK. So let's begin. Invasion of what structure causes dimpling of breasts due to malignancy? Suspensory ligaments. Injury to what nerve causes an inability to plant or flex? The tibial nerve. So remember tip and ped. So tip stands for tibial nerve, inverts, and plantar flexes. While ped stands for peroneal nerve, everts, and dorsiflexes. So if there's an injury to a nerve, and the patient cannot plant or flex, you can just remember tip. So the tibial nerve causes plantar flexion. So that would be the nerve that's affected. Injury of what nerve causes foot drop? So remember that when there is a dropped foot or foot drop, that's due to an inability to dorsiflex. So the answer would be peroneal nerve. Because remember, PED, that's peroneal nerve, everts, and dorsiflexes. So if a patient cannot dorsiflex or has a foot drop, then more than likely the peroneal nerve is affected. Does a femoral hernia protrude above or below the inguinal ligament? Below the inguinal ligament. Also remember that femoral hernias are more common in women. What veins drain the mammary glands? Internal thoracic, axillary, and intercostal veins. Fracture of which carpal bone can cause acute carpal tunnel syndrome? Lunate. What movement can be affected after a radical mastectomy? Weakness in abducting or abducting greater than 90 degrees. So remember that when a patient does a radical mastectomy, the nerve that is more likely to be injured is the long thoracic nerve. So with injuries of the long thoracic nerve, patients can develop what's called a winged scapula. So this is due to the serratus anterior being affected. So that's why they have weakness in abducting or abducting greater than 90 degrees. What nerve roots are affected in Klumpke's palsy? C8 and T1. So someone can develop Klumpke's palsy due to grabbing a tree when falling or during newborn delivery. So my bonus question is, what nerves are affected in Klumpke's palsy? If you said median and ulnar nerves, then you are correct. So in Klumpke's palsy, C8 and T1 nerve roots are affected, and the median and ulnar nerves are subsequently affected. So because of this, movements of the lumbricals will also be affected. What nerve is at risk when performing a thyroidectomy? The left and right laryngeal nerves. Damage to the fibular neck can cause damage to which nerve? The common peroneal nerve. And if you are enjoying this video so far or finding it helpful, please be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another high yield video like this. Now let's move on to fact number 11. 
rupture of the posterior duodenal ulcer can cause bleeding from which source? Like which arterial source? And the answer is the gastroduodenal artery. What nerve is affected in cubital tunnel syndrome? The ulnar nerve. What artery does the right recurrent laryngeal nerve travel around? The right subclavian artery. So it's important to know that the right recurrent laryngeal nerve travels around the right subclavian artery. However, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve travels around the aortic arch. A loss of taste of the posterior third of the tongue is due to damage to which nerve? The glossopharyngeal nerve. What is the most commonly torn muscle in the rotator cuff? Supraspinatus. It's also very high yield that you know that the supraspinatus, it initiates AB or abduction. What nerve can be injured in a mid-shaft humeral fracture? The radial nerve. What nerve can be injured in a humeral neck fracture? The axillary nerve. What nerve can be injured in a supracondylar humeral fracture? The median nerve. So if you think about it, fractures of the humerus can affect three main nerves and they can spell arm. So for the humeral neck fracture, the axillary nerve can be affected. For the mid shaft fracture, the radial nerve can be affected. And for the supracondylar fracture, the median nerve can be affected. So these are extremely high yield. At which vertebral level does bifurcation of the aorta occur? L4. What structures of the knee are injured in the unhappy triad? The medial collateral ligaments, the anterior cruciate ligaments, and the medial meniscus. Damage to which nerve causes a flattened deltoid? Axillary nerve. So remember that fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus or anterior humerus dislocation can cause damage to the axillary nerve. One of the ways that this can present is with a flattened deltoid. Damage to which nerve causes a loss of sensation to the medial portion of the hand? The ulnar nerve. So knowing the sensation of the hand is very high yield as well. To know what parts of the hand get sensation from the ulnar nerve, the radial nerve, the median nerve, those can all appear on exam day. What structure is immediately posterior to the manubrium? The thymus. A positive Lachman's test means that there is a damage to which structure? The ACL. Stenosis of a witch structure can cause elevation of the left main bronchus. And a hint would be it's a structure of the heart. The answer is the mitral valve.
So mitral stenosis can cause right atrium enlargement and thus leading to elevation of the left main bronchus. What is the relation of the ureter to the uterine artery? It is inferior. So just remember the term water under the bridge. Locking of the knee is associated with damage of which structure? A meniscal tear. Okay, now let's do a quick review. Just tell me what nerve root is associated with these different levels. So first, let's discuss the nipple. That's related to T4. Umbilicus, T10. The suprapubic region, L1. What nerve is at risk when repairing a PDA or patent ductus arteriosus? The recurrent laryngeal nerve. What nerve innervates the cricothyroid muscle? The external laryngeal nerve. So this is very high yield. So all laryngeal nerves, or rather all laryngeal muscles, are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve, except the cricothyroid, which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. And that brings us to the end of the 30 extremely high yield facts for the USMLE. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to power up the like button hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you never miss another high yield video like this. If you want to continue learning more, click this video right here.